YouTube only allows me 15 seconds to tell you what this video is about. But I'm a photographer, I'm not good with words. So, to make my point clear, this is my 2470 Canon L lens. I use this lens a lot, but not anymore because I only use prime lenses. So, f <laughs> And that brings me to this video, because why would you use two prime lenses? If you want to know, you can click the link above or the description below to find out in a separate video where I go in detail why I think you should use only prime lenses instead of zoom lenses. But the main focus of this video is of course the wedding behind the scenes, a wedding where I was a hybrid video and photographer at the same time, or photographer and video videographer, this is how we like it. I'm not going to tell you too much BS about this wedding because you can find out in a couple of seconds because you're going to jump on my camera, on my lens to have a front row seat on how I shoot weddings, video and photo at the same time. Since I shoot photo and video, I want to warm myself up. I do that by start shooting the details like shoes, dresses, perfume, etc. Meanwhile, the bride is getting her makeup done. And when the makeup art is almost done, I start shooting photos and videos. I'll ask them to sit somewhere where the light is nice and great, so I can make some beautiful shots for the bride and also for the makeup artist. Because sharing is caring, and I like to share a lot with other wedding vendors. In the other part of the wedding venue, the groom is getting ready for his first look. Because men tend to be really, really fast when getting ready, I sometimes ask them to do something twice, like putting on a jacket. Especially when shooting hybrid, it's okay to ask, to ask someone to do something twice. Shooting wedding is all about taking control whenever you can take control. Don't be afraid to ask someone to do something again. They will happily do it because they want to have great photos or videos and you want to have great photos and videos either. Remember, it's their wedding day and that's your wedding day. So be smart about things you ask them to do twice. The bride is now getting ready and also moments like this I like to take control. I ask the bride to stand in front of the window with her back towards the window so I have beautiful daylight to help me capture those stunning images. And the window I use like a main light source. I will play around with it, sometimes I will shoot against the light, sometimes I will shoot with the light. The bride wanted a first look with her father so we created a small beautiful moment with her father. I forgot to turn on my vlog cam during the first look with the groom and the bride, so sadly I don't have behind the scenes footage. But I have some shots, uh, photos and video I shoot in the wedding, um, the wedding video shots, so you can see them. During the first look I'll always shoot video first, because I want to see their initial reaction and if there's time we'll do, a, do it again in photo. But that's also a great starter for your photo shoot because mainly after the first look the photo shoot is around that time so we can start right away with the photo shoot the biggest problem with photo shoots during the day is the harsh sunlight so i always want to put the couple in the shade so i have soft light that makes the skin look stunning the posing for a wedding photographer can be quite intimidating for a wedding couple that is why I spend a lot of time getting to know the couples before the wedding day. On the wedding day itself, I will start with putting them across of each other and just let them do whatever they do. I ask them, the only thing I ask them is not to look at me, but look at each other. Unless I ask them to look at me. That way I can figure out if their movement is natural or they have to need or they need some help with posing. Because I want I don't want to give them the idea of posing at all. During the photo shoot I'll also show them photos and video to show them how great they are doing. By doing this you create more confidence and they will start to pose even better. I don't change locations too often because when you have great light stick to the great light. The light is more important than the location. Plus the wedding ceremony has yet to begin and we don't want a, a dirty dress the beginning of the wedding ceremony. That is why I always ask a couple to do an evening shoot with me. That's just a small tiny 10-20 minutes photo shoot um, 
That way they're very used to me, they had a drink, they're relaxed and it creates the best results. If the couple has vows on a wedding day, I'll be sure to record them separately, but also on a ceremony. And when I record the vows, I'll make some extra photos and videos, so I have extra footage for in the wedding video and also great photos. This wedding ceremony was very, very challenging because the orange LED above were flickering a lot. Even my assistant was complaining that she couldn't make a decent shot. So I knew we had to have extra Lightroom or Photoshop work to fix this problem. Luckily, the video didn't have a lot of problem with the flickering lights. I shot it on 50, uh, uh, 50 Hertz. But the orange lights from above and the blue light from outside from the window was a challenge. If you're not used to that, um, you have to put your white balance on, on a manual and find the sweet spot between the orange and the blue to make the great photos. You can add change it later in Lightroom, but on the wedding day if you change it you already can see what the result is going to be. As you can see I walk around almost everywhere during the wedding ceremony because my goal is to let couples relive their wedding day. It's not for me, I don't want to show people their photos or I want to show people the video, I want to relive the wedding day and there's a big difference. So I use my prime lens, my 35 millimeters, set really close so it gives the idea that you're really with them on the video or on the photos. On my other camera I have a 50mm lens for portraits and close shots and these two lenses do exactly what I want them to do and they come very close to a human eye. After the wedding ceremony was time for cake and dinner but I don't have any footage of the, the wedding or the dinner location because the dinner location had way more flickering and there was no daylight so the footage wasn't great for a vlog. Um, at the end of dinner we did a little evening shoot, it was so much more fun because everybody was relaxed and it was, there were drinks and everybody was just enjoying themselves and the results were stunning. So in case you wondered if my lens survived, well I duct taped it because it's now, can you hear it? It's a little bit loose, it still works kind of, but it didn't survive the fall well. But that's the price you have to pay if you want to be a YouTuber, I guess. Let me know in the comments what your favorite lens combination is. Maybe I'm wrong and should I use uh, zoom lenses instead of prime lenses or the other way around. If you want to see more behind the scenes weddings or color grading stuff, check out my channel. But if you want to see more of the behind the scenes, make sure you give the like button a big hug and give me a follow so I can keep making those videos behind the scenes to show you everything about photography, hybrid photography, videography and all that cool stuff.